Welcome to the Rise of the Trades podcast, the show dedicated to helping you to build, grow, and scale your trades or construction business. All rise for your host, Craig Wilkinson. Welcome to this week's coaching episode of the Rise of the Trades podcast, where we help trades and construction business owners to skyrocket leads, explode their net profits without having to graph 60 hours a week and becoming that classic busy fool. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to build a trustworthy, reliable, honest, hardworking team to scale your trades or construction business. But before we go there, I've got some exciting news that many of you have been waiting for. And that is the doors are now open for you to be able to apply to join my inner circle. My inner circle is a 12 month marketing and business coaching program where you get live coaching online from me to a small group of trades business owners that are serious about taking their businesses and their lives to a whole new level. To discover more about joining my marketing and business coaching program, please click the link in the description and head over to discover more. Now let's transition over to this week's coaching episode. Listen, when it comes to employing a team, there are only two reasons and two reasons only why anybody should employ a team. Whether that's an employed member of staff or a subcontractor, there's only two reasons. Have a guess what you think those two reasons are. Because in most cases, when people start to employ more staff. They take the eye off the ball of the most important two responsibilities and the two actions and goals of what that team member is designed to do. So these are the two reasons and the two reasons only why you employ a team. Number one is that team member is there to make you and increase your net profits. They are there to make you more money. Also, otherwise, if that's not what their role is, why the hell are you employing them? So number one, it's to make you more profit. Number two, it's to free up your valuable time. Your time is the most valuable and most powerful commodity and thing that you've got in your business. So we need that team member to free up our time, not to take more of it. So they're the only two reasons why we need to employ a team. But sadly, for lots of people that are already employing members of staff, number one, their staff members aren't making them a great deal more profit for the amount of time it's taking. And number two, they're certainly not saving you loads and loads of time. In fact, for most people, their team members are robbing their time. So it's defeating the object of building a team. Now, if there is one thing I'm sure of in the three decades plus that I've been running businesses, it's this. If you want to reach your full potential, right, if you want to build a business that provides you and your family with time and financial freedom, then you're going to need to build a good freaking team around you. And it doesn't matter how passionate or how hardworking you are. The bottom line is simply this. There are only 168 hours in a working in in any week. There's 168 hours in a week, which means it's impossible for you to grow and scale your business on your own. There's just not enough hours in a week to scale your business do the work, look after your customers and have a life outside of work where you're spending time doing things what you want to do on hobbies and me time and family time. There's just not enough hours in in the day. So in this case, 
we've got to start to bring a team in that makes us profit and frees up our time, not costs us money and costs us time. Now, there are three stages of business growth that we all go through on our journey. And it's usually when you are transitioning between stages one into stages two, where the big mistake is made. Now, if you want to know what these three stages of business growth are, so you fully understand them, then I want you to go and check out episode number two, episode number two, where I share the three crucial stages of business growth, warning, avoid stage two at all costs. So go and check out episode two at the end of this one to discover what they are. Now, I mentioned the big mistake, and here's what happens. When you first set up your business, it's more than likely just you on your own. But it gets to a point where your reputation starts to grow, word of mouth referrals start to come in, your marketing starts to kick in, and then all of a sudden, you've got too much work coming in for just you. So your natural instinct is this. Right, I need to go and employ somebody else. And that could be an apprentice. It could be another engineer, another fitter. But you need to, you need help. You've got so much work coming in. And you're rubbing your hands thinking, I'm growing my business here. I've gone from me being on my own to all this work. Now, if I take somebody else on, what's going to happen is I'm growing my business. I'm scaling my business. And if I can get another member of team on board, I'm going to be making double the amount of money. Now, that's what process you go through. But in them early stages and in them early years, you don't know the numbers in your business. So you've got no idea whether that's the right time to employ that member of staff in the first place because you don't know the numbers. You're not running your gross net profits. You don't know your break even figures. You don't know your hourly rate. You don't cash flow this out to make sure that you can afford them. You're winging it. You don't have the right systems in place to be able to cope with all this additional work. You don't have the right systems in place and procedures in place to train this new member of team up on how you want them to behave and the standards of work. No, 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 you don't do any of that. What you do is you start asking around, oh, does anybody want to, does anybody know a joiner, an electrician, a plumber? I'm pulled out of work. I need a hand. And what you do then is you take a punt and you take somebody on. Now, you could get incredibly lucky at this point because I've done it on the odd occasion and I know some of my inner circle members have done it on the odd occasion where you just take someone on and they're perfect. They are the finished article. They're trustworthy, they're reliable, they're honest, they're conscientious, they're hardworking and you just fall lucky. But let's face it, the majority of the time you employ someone and it's the wrong person. And you've employed the wrong person, which is now costing you time and costing you money. And remember what I've just said. The only two reasons why you employ a team is to make you more money and give you the time back, not to sap you of your money and sap you of your time. Now, when you do this, and the mistake is... You've just given that new employee or subcontractor a hand grenade. And they're now walking around with this hand grenade in their hands. And at any one time, they can pull the pin out of that hand grenade. And when they do pull the pin out of that hand grenade, that creates a series of explosions that starts to happen in your business. Now, if you already employ people or you have some contractors working for you, I'm sure you will have experienced some of these explosions already in your business. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you and give you 15 
of the most common explosions that will be happening in your business if you don't bring in the right employees or subcontractor and if you don't follow the four foundations that I'm going to share with you in this episode. Now, these aren't all the explosions that can happen within your business. These are just some of, oh, I've listed 15. These are 15 that I had in my joinery business way back in 1994 when I first set it up because I didn't know any of this. Nobody told me how to or showed me how to employ people. I'd never even heard of these four foundations I'm going to share with you. So these 15 points here, these explosions are what I've experienced and having coached thousands of other trades business owners when we come to looking at their team and building their team, they've also experienced some of these 15 explosions. So I want you to get your notepads out, get your pens out, get your tablets out and make a note of what I'm going to share with you from this point on. Explosion number one. Your employee cannot make decisions for the sake of, on their life. They just can't make decisions which leads to explosion number two, which is they're ringing you every other hour. What do I do here? What do I do here? Customers ask me this. What shall I tell them? I've come across this problem. And they just can't seem to make decisions. And they're ringing you, asking you stupid questions. Remember, your team is designed to make you profit. Well, they're not making you profit if they're asking you stupid questions and they're certainly not saving you time if they're on the blower every hour asking you stupid questions. Explosion number three. They've got no common sense. Some of these decisions and some of these questions they're ringing you up for, surely as a grown-ass adult, they can answer these questions. Surely as a skilled tradesman or woman, they know what they should be doing. They just don't seem to have any common sense. Explosion number four. You become a babysitter. You don't become the business owner. You're not the director of your own company. You become a babysitter because now you're having to babysit a number of different people and you're having to wipe the bums for them because they've got no common sense and they can't make the right decisions. So they're badgering you every five minutes. It's like walking around with adults with nappies on having to wipe their arses because they can't do things. Explosion number five. Timekeeping. Turning up late for work. Turning up late at customers' houses. Going out on a Sunday evening and getting absolutely blind or and then knocking on a Monday morning. You know what I'm on about when you get that text on a Monday morning. I'm not coming in. I feel ill. And then all of a sudden, your profit is gone. Your time is gone. You're now reord reordering and rescheduling your entire diary because that person's let you down. Explosion number six. Upsetting your customers or upsetting other team members with their attitude. Maybe they've got no values and morals, and maybe they're smoking on a customer's property, flicking tab ends all over the garden. I don't know. Maybe it's their bad language that you, they're using on your jobs or the lack of communication with your customers. Explosion number seven. They spend more time playing on the phones Dicking about on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, texting the wife, texting the husbands. What do you want for tea? They're spending more time in your working hours, tossing it off, playing on the mobile phones rather than focusing on what the job is there to do. Explosion number eight. Not wearing your uniform. Your professional, you provide them with a uniform, a branded uniform. And then you'll get days where they just don't rock up with our uniform on. They, drop, they rock up with trainers on or tracksuit bottoms or a Nike hoodie. Where's the uniform that I've provided for you? I've lost it. It's in wash. It's in dirty wash basket. Come on. Explosion number nine. 
not keeping your vans clean and tidy, right? The vans are a mess. They've not been washed. You open the back of the van, it looks like a bomb's gone off on it. You look at the dashboard, they've got McDonald's cups, Costa coffee cups, delivery tickets, newspapers all over your van. Explosion number 10. Forgetting the tools or they've left them on another job. So you send them to do a job, they ring you up, oh, I can't do it, why? Oh, I'm a drills on other job. What? Or oh, stepladders are on other job. What? Explosion number 11. Pinching materials from you to do their own work. I've had it in the past where plasterboards have gone missing, boxes of screws have gone missing, lens of 4B2s have gone missing, cement mix has gone missing. They're pinching your materials. Number 12. Pinching work or pinching your customers. You may well have had it where your team are now considering going on their own, maybe self-employed. And what they're now starting to do is pinch work off your customers. And now your customers are going direct to your team. Explosion number 13. Using your marketing material to benefit them. I.e. nicking your pictures off your Facebook page and making out as though it's their work. Explosion 14. Negative team members. You know the ones, the ones that rock up, they haven't got a nice word to say about anybody. They are negative through and through, the poison, and now they've started to poison your other team members, and now it's dragging the other team members down. Nobody wants to work with them. Explosion number 15. And I find this in the younger generation, mainly. It's the fuck it attitude. Yeah, fuck it, it's not my job. Fuck it, it's not my responsibility. Fuck it, it's not my customer. Fuck it, it's not my business. It's that horrible attitude that some people have got within the trades and construction industry. Oh, I tell you what, I just thought of another one. I'll throw a bonus one in, yeah? What about this one? Muggins here, years ago, had to go and drive to the other side of Sheffield to pick a joiner up to then drive to the other side of Sheffield to drop him off, to then drive back to office. Here's me grafting all day in office. I then drive back to the job to pick him up, back to his house other side of Sheffield to drop him off, then back to my house. I was fucking Uber, Uber back in the day. I mean, come on, what's going off? If you've got team members that are doing any of these mini explosions in your business, then clearly you're, you've got the wrong team members. And clearly they are not brought in to do what you want them to do, which is make you more profit and free up your time. No, 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 no. Now they're costing you money and they're costing you your time and something's got to change. And let me tell you now what has to change. What has to change in your business to stop them explosions from happening is you. Let me say it again. It's you. I mean, come on. Whose fault is it if any of these explosions are happening right now or have happened in your business? The person who's responsible for your business is you. You are letting this happen in your business. You are letting your team take advantage of you in your business. You are letting your team cost you time and cost you money. You're the problem, not your team, because you've let this happen. So to stop this from happening, you've got to start to become a strong but fair leader. Now, we all lead in some form of capacity, whether that be you are the leader of your family and your family rely on you and you lead them. Maybe you are a leader of a local type of community, whether that's online or offline. Maybe you run a Facebook group and you're leading your community like I do with my Trades Freedom Club Facebook group. Maybe you're a leader of a sports team. But one thing is for sure, 
You are a leader of your business. You are the captain of your ship. Your shipmates should be doing exactly what you want them to do to make you the money and to save your time, not what they want to do, which is causing you grief. Now, becoming a strong and fair and firm leader does not come natural to most people. And it didn't come natural to me back in the day. You see, I didn't like confrontation. I didn't want it. If I'm being honest, there were a few people that I employed, albeit some of them subcontractors, that deep down, honestly, I were actually scared of. And I thought, if I go and approach them, I'm going to get, me, I'm going to get absolutely battered. They're going to kick me head in. Oh, I didn't want to upset people because that wasn't in my nature. So I just let things slide. I'd let them use my van and my trade accounts to do things like fiddle jobs at weekends. And then I made the biggest mistake of all. And that is, I thought, I just want to be everybody's friend. If I'm everybody's friend and I get to know all my team and I become more like a friend, they're probably going to respect me more. Listen, you can't be friends. You can't have best friends in your business. You are their boss. And the minute you cross that grey line where they think you're one of the lads or they think you're a friend and not a boss, then that's when they'll start to take advantage. So I wasn't a natural born leader. Along my journey, I've had to learn leadership skills. I've had to implement new tactics and new strategies. I've been on leadership skills courses and training for me to become a better leader. Because if I'm going to build and grow and scale a business that's going to look after me and my family for the rest of our lives, I've got to become a good leader. I can't let people trample all straight over top of me. And I certainly can't be scared of confrontation. So if you want to know how to set boundaries with your team, I suggest you go and check out episode number eight. Because in episode number eight, I share how to set your boundaries and the rules with your customers and your team. So you take ownership of that relationship and they start to do what you want them to do rather than them barking orders and you doing what your customers or your team are expecting to do. Now, you might say, I get all that, Craig, but I've only got a small team and I don't mind them doing this and I don't mind them doing that. And I expect them to make the odd mistake. I get that. And if you've got a small team and you've got these series of mini explosions going off and you feel as though you can cope with it and it's not frustrating you and it's not pissing you off and you're happy for them to lose your money and waste your time, then you crack on. But I want you to think about this. Imagine you now having a team of 10, 15 or even 20 employees and you've let every one of them into your business and every one of them are now walking around with a hand grenade. The minute you start to get beyond 10 members of staff, which is what I which is what I have had and have, the minute you get beyond that and they've got an hand grenade, I am telling you now, if they all pull them pins out of the hand grenade at the same time, or they all pull the pins out of the hand grenade on a particular job, um, you are going to end up with one big, massive fucking explosion that costs you time and money. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not in business for grief. I'm not in business to be taken advantage of. I'm not in business to lose money. I'm not in business anymore to work 80 hours a week because somebody's cocked up on a job and therefore I've got to go back in my own time and do the job again, which is now costing me time and money. Listen, the bigger your team grows, the more hand grenades they're walking around with, the bigger the explosion you're going to have in your business. So how do we stop this from happening? How do we take back control of these relationships and get our team to work to high standards where we can then remove that hand grenade out of the hands, safely knowing that there's going to be no explosions? And when we start to take the hand grenades away and we start to replace them hand grenades with the rules of how we want people to act and behave in our business, 
all of a sudden, we start to gel and bond and create a team. And when all that team is singing from the same hymn sheet, your hymn sheet that they're all abiding to, that is when you've taken back control, your team starts to run your business for you, your team starts to make you profit and your team starts to give you back your time. So let's explore how we do that through what I call four foundations to building the ultimate team. Now, as I've already alluded to, over the last 20 years, I've been on so many fantastic leadership skills training because I, I understand and I know the value in becoming a great leader, right? Becoming a great leader will pay yourself back 10 times over the dividends and the and the, the benefits of becoming a good leader is immense to your business. So with me investing into all this, I started to learn about new phrases, new techniques, let's call them. And at first, as a, as a building contractor, sat in a room with loads and loads of different business owners from different industries and different sectors, you know, a lot of corporate companies involved. At one point, I'm sat there thinking, really? These four foundations, are these really going to work in a construction business? They might work in a pharmaceutical business or they might work in an accountancy practice, but we're fucking builders, we're tradesmen, we're hard as fuck, aren't we us? You know, are these really going to work? And that's exactly what I thought. Now, you may well think the same when I share what these are. But I'm telling you now, if you go away and you put these four foundations in place, I absolutely guarantee that you'll scale your business. You'll build a phenomenal team. That team will make you the profit. They'll give you the time back and they'll be motivated and hungry to help you achieve success. Now, how many of you have got employees right now that are like that? Probably not many. So don't discount what I'm going to share with you. And if you've got to come back and listen to this episode two or three times for it to sink in, then so be it. So get your notepads, get your pens, let's get stuck in. Foundation number one is called vision. Vision. And what I want you to do is I want you to create the vision of where your business is heading. Because I'm guessing your business has changed, it's morphed, it's grown. You've changed as a person over, over the time you've had your business. So your business doesn't look like it did on day one. It's changing. So therefore, your vision of where your business is going and the direction you're heading in, the new products, the new service, the new technology, the new renewables, all this new forward thinking Things are coming out, which is shifting and changing the shape of how you may be looking at your business. You might see other people going into other, other products and services and think, actually, I need to go in that direction. So your vision is changing. And on our inner circle, when we go through the vision process, we start off that session. I say, right, share your vision. And, and, and within like 30 seconds, they've shared it. And I'm like, that's not a vision. I'm on about crystal clear clarity of where you're heading in your business. What does it look like? How many staff have you got? What systems have you got in place in your business? What's your turnover? What's your profit margins? What products, what services are you offering? What's your customer service? What's your marketing strategy? How are you generating leads? All that lot is your vision. And most business owners... I'll say, right, what's your vision? They tell me after 30 seconds. And I say, no, that's not your vision. This is, let me challenge you on it. And then all of a sudden they sit there scratching their heads and they scratch their heads for hours, if not days or weeks when we do this on my inner circle because they've never sat down and got crystal clear clarity of where they're heading and what the vision is looked like when the business is built and finished. Now think about it. If you, the business owner, doesn't understand where your business is heading, 
and you've not got 100% clarity on everything in your business, from your marketing to the numbers to your organisational structure on what your team's going to look like, if you've got none of that written down, absolute crystal clear clarity, if you haven't got it, how the fuck is your team supposed to help you achieve that vision? Remember, your team's here to make you more profit and sit and free up your time. But if you don't know where you're going, how the hell can you expect to bring a team in and your team help you get to where you want to be if you don't know where you want to be? You could be going in 100 mile an hour in that direction when in actual fact, if you sat down and plotted out your vision, you and your team should have been taking you in a completely different direction. So foundation one is you got to create that vision of where your business is heading. And then what we're going to do is we're going to share the vision with our team on where we are heading. This is the direction team. This is where we're heading. This is what it looks like. This is together as a team what we're going to achieve. And then what we start to do is we start to bring our team into these conversations. We start to bring our team into our business. Now, when I first started doing this, which has got to be over 20 years ago, when I first started doing it, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. That means I've got to tell my employees or my subcontractors exactly what I'm doing in my business and where I'm heading. And I thought to myself, I'm not telling them that. For all I know, they could take my ideas and the noticing set up on their own next week as competition against me. And that was my negative mindset back then. So if you're sat there thinking, I don't want to share my vision with my team, then come on. If you're worried about one of your team members going away and setting up and being competition against you, if that's what you're worried about, what the hell are you doing in business? Surely you want to dominate. Surely you want to win the race. Surely you want to be 10 steps ahead of everybody else. And so what? It doesn't matter if they go and pinch your idea because that's the idea and that's the vision at that time. But in a couple of months time, your vision might have changed. So don't worry about people pinching your ideas and pinching your vision. Forget about it. You've got to get that team on board to help you achieve that vision. And if they don't know where they're heading, how can they help you get to your goals? So foundation number one is I want you to create your vision and then we're going to share the vision with the team. And if you haven't got a team now, that's fine. In fact, that's brilliant because you won't have made all the classic mistakes that everybody else has already made, i.e. all the mini explosions going off in the business. You need to put that vision together so when you bring your first employee in or your first subcontractor in, you can sit down with them and share where you're going. And they'll go, wow, that's really interesting. Nobody's ever done that to me before, Craig. I'm really buying into this vision of yours and I want to help you achieve it. And that's what we're trying to do. Or that's what we are doing. We're converting them, fuck it, attitude people. I don't give a shit, not my business. You don't want them working for you. And this process of going through these four foundations are going to wean them out. And eventually you'll be left with a team that is wanting to help you achieve your vision. And then when you bring a new team member in, you sit them down, you share that vision with you, and then all your team is heading in the same direction. Foundation number two is what I call mission. Write it down, mission. And the mission is the how are we going to achieve that vision? I get the vision, Craig, but how are we going to achieve it? How are we going to get there? What stepping stones, what milestones, what targets, what goals do we need to achieve to get to that vision? Because I'm guessing when you've mapped your vision out, you're going to be looking at it and going, well, I can't get there because I've got some missing pieces of my jigsaw puzzle. I don't know how to get there. Right. Well, that's your mission. That's your team's mission. We've got to get from where we are now, team, to where we want to be in two, three, four, five years. We've got to get there. So come on, team. What are all the missing things that we need? How can I help you on the jobs? What tools do you need? What apps do you need? What systems can we put in place to help us get to that vision quicker and easier? How can I make your life easier, team? Come on. 
And what we do then is we create all the steps and all the missing pieces of your business jigsaw puzzle. We pull them out and we go, right, okay, so we're going to need a new website. I get that. Okay, we're going to want some systems put in place, maybe like Leadzilla. Okay, I get that. We are going to have to move into an office at some point. We're going to have to bring some more vans in. We're going to have to take on a part-time admin person. So you start to plan out what the mission is on how you're going to achieve that vision. Because remember, your team needs to understand the vision so they know the direction you're going in. But then they need to understand all the things that need to be done to get there because they're going to help you put all these stepping stones in place to speed up that vision process. So foundation number two is what we call mission. Foundation number three is what I call culture. Culture. And what I mean by this is what culture do you want within your business? Because when I was a sub years and years and years ago, when I started subcontracting, I'd worked for some really good companies that I got a good values, good morals, good standards, good beliefs. They paid me on time. They didn't give me any crap. They had great jobs, good lads working for them, bit of banter. It was a pleasure to go and work for these businesses. But then I also used to subcontract for some businesses that I just hated working for because the gaffer or the boss or the business owner were a twat, right? And he treated people with disrespect, and that had a knock-on effect as a leader because then his foreman or his site manager would treat people with disrespect. And it was like a toxic atmosphere and you'd never got the materials that you needed to do a job or you were having to use your own materials to do a job because they were too tight to go and buy some plasloid nails or whatever it were, what I were doing. Are you with me? And the culture was just negative and it was toxic and it were horrible. Now, I don't want to work for people that have got a culture that's toxic, nasty, negative, and horrible. So what culture do you want setting in your business? Because if you were to speak to any of my employees, any of my freelancers, any of my inner circle members, any member of my Trades Freedom Club free Facebook group who are in involved in my group, I don't know them personally, but I'm pretty sure they'd said, you know what? Craig's created an amazing Facebook group here. It's free. It's positive. It's full of helpful people that are all on the same journey. We're all on the same mission together. Everybody wants to help and support each other. That's the culture that I want. But it starts with me. It starts with me being the leader because whatever culture I breed is then going to have a knock-on effect further down the line. So I don't want that. I want a positive culture. So what culture do you want? What standards, what morals, what values, what beliefs have you got as a business owner that you want to then pass on to your team? So they've got the same values, morals, beliefs, standard of workmanship as what you would do. That's what we're looking for. But you've got to set that tone. So what tone of culture are you going to have in your business? Write that down because that needs sharing with your team. Foundation number four is something that I just call, and this is just my terminology, I call the rules of my game. The rules of my game. And what I want you to imagine here is this. Now, I follow football, right? I'm a football fan. I follow... Yorkshire's number one football team, Sheffield United, and I know some of you are laughing at that, but there you go for my sins, right? So I want to think about my team. If I were the manager of Sheffield United, if I were the coach of Sheffield United, I know the objective and the mission is to win the game. I've got to win the game and get three points. And the vision is I want to win the Premier League and the Champions League, right? So... The rules of the game of football is when you cross that white line, there are certain rules that you've got to abide by when you're on that pitch. So when my players 
are on the pitch, they've got to win the game, but they've got to abide by some rules. For instance, if you bring somebody down in penalty box, it's a penalty. If the ball goes out behind the net, it's either a goal kick or a corner. If I want to make some substitutions, I have to make the ref aware of that. If we score a goal, we're back to taking a, the kickoff again. There's certain rules that we have to abide by as coaches, as leaders and as players once we cross that white line. But the objective is to get three points and beat Sheffield Wednesday in Champions League final and get and, and get and win the trophy. That's the vision, okay? I want you to think about you are that football coach or that manager. Or if you're not into football and you're into rugby or whatever sport, that's fine. But you choose the team that come to play in your game. You choose the players that come into your business. It's down to you to make the right transfers and the right signings. And then you put a team together. And then when that team crosses that white line, in your case, your business, they go into your business, they know what the vision is, they know what the mission is, and they know the culture. So what we've got to now do is we've got to set the rules of your game. So when they cross that white line into your business, what are the rules that they have to abide by? Because they'll, if they break the rules, something has to happen. These consequences. Now, your players or your employees, they do not know what your rules are. Why? Because you've never written them down before. Because you've never explained them before. Because you don't know what the rules are in your own game. So when you bring a new employee into your business... You are bringing all of their bad experiences, bad attitudes, negative attitudes. People they've worked for in the past have let them get away with blue murder. Poor standards of workmanship, poor standards of timekeeping. They've been allowed to wear tracksuit bottoms and a night sweat, sweatshirt for coming to work. They've been allowed to, uh, allowed to drive around in vans that look like they've not been washed in 10 years, right? That's what's coming to your door. So if you don't explain to them, whoa, hang on a minute, before you cross my white line, these are the rules of my game. I've, I've signed you as a player to play for my team, but when you go into my business, these are the rules, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to just literally get two pieces of paper or two word documents, whatever you want to do. And on one of them, you're going to write down all of the things that you want your team to do, that you are expecting your team to do. Because they don't know. They're coming to your business and they didn't know that you were expecting them to do A, B and C. So you need to explain it to them. So number one, you write down all of the things that you want them to do and you are expecting them to do. OK, so this could be, listen, in our business, we use uh, ServiceMate or Tradeify or Leadzilla or Commusoft and you are expected to, here's, here's, a, here's the phone, here's a tablet. Every day you are expected to log in and fill this information in. If that's what you want them to do, then you've got to tell them that up front. You might say, all oh, my team get photos or videos of the jobs that they're on, the before, during and after pictures. And then what they do with that content is they upload it into Google Drive or Dropbox that comes through to office and then we've got social media content. So I want you to do that. Now, if you don't explain that to them, how are they supposed to know? Or you might say, I want you to order your own materials for every job that you go on. So here's a works phone, here are all our contacts, here's who you need to speak to. You order the materials for your own jobs. Don't be ringing me back in office or badgering me to order a length of timber or a box of screws or a tube of silicon. You do it. If that's what you want them to do, then you have to tell them. Because they're not mind readers. Likewise, 
on the other sheet or the other Word document, you're now going to write down all of the things that you do not want them to do and they cannot do in your business. And you write all that lot down. Because again, they will probably do some of that because that's what they've been used to working for other people. So when they cross your white line, it's down to you to explain to them the rules. Listen, you can't smoke on customers' jobs. You can't be flicking tab ends on, on customers' garden. We don't wear hoodies for work because I provide you with jumpers, but we don't wear hoodies because I don't want you stood outside someone's house with your hood up and five of my employees all stood outside someone's house with their hood up smoking. It looks bad on brand. It looks poor. So whatever it is you do not want them to do, you have to explain it to them. And then you establish the rules of your game. So now you're in control of the player that you sign, which is your new employee. You're now going to explain to them what the rules of the game are. So when they cross that white line, they get it. I know I'm expected to do that and Craig doesn't want me to do that. And as long as you explain it up front to them, then they'll respect that. And if you've employed the right people, they'll stick to those rules. So that's what I mean with the rules of the game. You've got to explain to them what you do want them to do and what you don't want them to do. Now, when you follow those four foundations, what you're actually doing is you're taking the hand grenade out of the hands before they've even started working for you. And if you've got a team of three, five, 10, 30 employees or subbies that are walking around with no hand grenades, then you're not going to get the mini explosions and you're not going to get the big explosions that are going to cause you time and money. Now think about this. This is how I used to, 20 odd years ago, employ people. Right, I'm busy because now I'm over capacity because I don't understand the power of saying no to people and customers. So I keep saying yes to all these jobs and now all of a sudden I'm over capacity I've got too much work on, I'm panicking, I'm stressing, and I need labour. So what I used to do, I used to say to my team, right, and listen, we need a joiner, we need a plumber, I need a plasterer, right? I've got three months work for them, I've took too much work on, who do we know? And then a day or two later, someone will come up to me and go, oh, Craig, I know a lad, he's just been laid off. He'll do, he'll do, what is he? Joiner, he'll do, all right. I'd ring him up. I'd say, right, what you been doing? Where you been working at? Right, this is what I'm paying you. And he'd go, sound. And I'd say, right, I want you to go to this address. Go to this job. It's a loft conversion. You start on Monday. I'll give you a two-week trial, right? And we'll go to that job, eight o'clock, Monday morning, and ask for John, Fred, whatever. And they're going to be showing you ropes and they'll run, job, they'll, they'll run you through the job. Is that all right? Yeah, bang, phone go down. That's what I used to do. Now, understanding and learning all this, what I do is I have a seven-step process to make sure that the person that's coming into my business, and this doesn't matter whether it's another person on the tools, whether it's an admin person, it could be a freelancer doing some marketing for us, it doesn't matter. I go through a seven-step process to make sure that I'm employing the right person in the first place. A person with the right values, moral standards, beliefs. A person that's got the right skill set to do that job. Then what I do is I'll sit them down and I'll onboard that new member of staff or that new joiner, plasterer, sparky, plumber, eating engineer, whatever... I'd take time out that day and say, come and see me, come to office, meet me in a Costa Coffee, wherever you need to do it. And I say, right, listen, we do things different in our business. We are not just another whatever. So what I want to run you through today, I'm going to run you through our four foundations. And what I'd do is I'd sit down and I'd say, right, John, taking you on as a joiner, right? But what I want to share with you, I want to share the vision of where my business is going. And I'd sit down and I'd go through that vision. 
and I'd explain to them what it looks like. That's the objective. All the teams on board with it, right? And they're going to sit there and go, I like that. that, that I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's involving me in this business. He's sharing the vision. He's getting me involved. Then what I would do is I would share the mission. I'd say, right, John, so that's where we're going. But this is how, as a business, we're going to get to that vision. We're going to be having a new website built. We're going to be taking on more staff. We're going to be bringing in a site manager. We're going to be taking on more vans, blah, blah, blah. That's what we're going to do. All right, brilliant. I get it. Now, John, in our business, we've got a certain culture that we all abide by. And this is the culture. And I'd explain the positive culture. We have an open door policy and everything else that's part of my culture statement. And I said, that's how we behave. There's no negativity. There's no gobbing off. There's re we have to respect each other. All that lot, I go through it all. So he knows what the culture and the tone is. Then I would say, right, John, when you start on the job tomorrow, I just want to run you through what, and I don't call it the rules of my game to employ it when I'm bringing someone on. I just call that in my own head. We call it our staff handbook. That's what we call it. And in our staff handbook is the rules of my game. So I'll sit down and I'll say, right, I just want to run through a few things just so you're aware of them. So there's no mixed communication. So nothing can go wrong. I just want to run through them here. Yeah. So I'd say, right, it, these are all the things that we do and I'm expecting you to do in our business. I'm expecting you to use Leadzilla every day. I'm expecting you to take photos every day. I'm expecting you to order your own materials every day. Are you with me? I'd go through that. And then he's right, right, I get it. But on the flip side of that, John, these are the things that we don't want to happen and that can't happen. You can't be stood outside customers' houses smoking. You can't be effing and jeffing. You can't have your hood up or all this type of stuff. I'd go through it all. And then at the end of that, I'd say to them, right, do you have any questions? And if they've got any questions, I'll address it. And if they haven't, I've onboarded them. And now they fully understand what our business is all about. Then what I do is the day after when he goes and starts and he goes on the job, he's now singing from the same hymn sheet as what all the other team members are. And they're all happy. There's nobody pulling pins out of hand grenades. It's an open door policy. They can always come and speak to me if there's any issues or anything like that. And everybody gets on. And everybody starts to make me profit. And everybody starts to free up my time. Just like a team is meant to do for you. So, I want you to create those four foundations and you creating them honestly it's it's a bit of fun as well because you can sit down and you can go actually where do i want this business to be what is the vision because at the minute i'm on an hamster wheel and every day is groundhog day and i don't get chance to sit down and think about the future vision of my business think of the mission what are the missing pieces that you need to get there so this is forming like a plan of action and what you and your team are going to do how can I change the culture that I've currently got? Or how can I set a new culture and a new tone so that everybody's singing from that same hymn sheet and everybody's getting on? What are the rules of the game? Is right, Craig's right on his podcasts. I'm in charge of bringing in my team. I've just got to make sure my team play the rules of the game. So what are the rules of the game? And then we share it. And when you do this and you keep your team motivated, like taking them on, Days out, like we've, we've done abseiling, we've done go-karting, we've done army assault courses, we've done, we go out for meals, we've done it all. And then you keep your team's moral up, morals, and you keep your team, sorry, motivation, keep your team's motivation levels up and bond them as a team and do team activities like abseiling or whatever you want to do. It bonds the team. And then all of a sudden, you've created a team that's there, that's helping you achieve that vision. And as a leader, that is exactly what your job and role is within your business. What you don't do not want is you to be a weak pushover, 
leader where your team and your customers are taking advantage of you, where you're doing all the work, where they're tossing it off and where you ain't got enough money to pay yourself, but you're having to pay these employees or subcontractors. And then they're cocking up on jobs that you're going to have to go back and put right that's costing you time and money. You don't want all that shit to deal with. That is not building and scaling a business. That's creating yourself the toughest job in the world, isn't it? So, what I'd like to know is, what actions are you now going to take from this episode? What are you now going to go away and start to implement? Because you can't go away and implement all four foundations today. It's going to take some time. So out of those four foundations, which one is the most important to you and your business right now? Which one is it that you need to start to smarten up and get your team on board with right now? It might be culture, right? Create your new culture, then explain it to them. Then give it another couple of weeks, create your vision, and then go and give them the vision. And all of a sudden, you'll start to bond your team. But I want to know what actions are you going to take? So I would love you to head over to our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group and tell us in the group that you've listened to this episode and this is what you've learned from it and this is what you're implementing and these are the wins that you're starting to achieve from it. Come and tell us in our Facebook group. If you're not a member of our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group, you can join the group by clicking the link in the description around this episode. And remember, the results that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. Thank you for listening to this episode. I'll see you on next week's and I'll see you at the top. Thank you. 